With the seemingly never-ending coronavirus pandemic still affecting our lives two years after it was first reported in Wuhan, and no end in sight after we had just seen endless variant after variant still emerging, it got me wondering, how did pandemics in the past end? Why aren't such diseases such as the Black Plague still at pandemic levels? Now, I've always had a fascination with the Spanish flu, mainly because of it coming during the backdrop of World War I in 1918. I've always imagined the double heartbreak people must have suffered in that era, with husbands and sons returning from the Great War only to catch Spanish flu and be condemned to illness. So because of this, I thought, why not look at that particular pandemic? Coming in as the second deadliest epidemic in recorded human history, just behind the Black Death, with a mind-boggling death toll of anywhere from 17 to 100 million, making it more deadly than the Great War, the story is definitely fascinating. But the question still persists. How did a global pandemic with such a wide-reaching spread and a high death toll end? How did we beat it without the use of modern medical practices we see today? Is there anything we can learn from it to help us in our fight against COVID-19? Spanish flu is the worst epidemic humanity has experienced in recent memory, which luckily for us means we actually have a lot of records available to cover in this video trying to answer the question of how did the Spanish flu end? But... Did you know the virus was particularly deadly for the young and healthy, with it normally dodging the elderly and juvenile, unlike normal influenzas, with those above the age of 75 having the lowest death rate of all? Or that there is actually little evidence of the virus originating in Spain, with some points into it actually coming from East Asia or the United States? All that World War I had a direct effect on the transmission of the virus with the crowding in military camps and international travel from the war helping to increase the spread. Well, make sure to watch until the end because this short seven minute documentary will cover all and more. And if you like this video, please subscribe and let me know in the comments if there are any other topics you would like to see me cover. The first recorded case of the Spanish flu or the 1918 influenza pandemic was documented on the 4th of March 1918 in Kansas, the United States with US Army Private Albert Gichel being the first confirmed infected person. Gichel was the army cook at Camp Funston, and while he's the first recorded person to be infected, he most likely wasn't the earliest. Within four days of the first recorded case, 522 more men were reported sick. By the 11th of March, the virus was reported to have reached New York. Now, this doesn't mean that the first case was actually in Kansas, or that it spread directly to New York, or even that it originated in America although there is evidence for that. The virus could have been spreading throughout the population before Gachelle fell ill in Kansas and it just wasn't recorded or noticed. What really got the ball rolling, however, was the mobilisation of US forces in the final year of World War I. The United States only became involved militarily towards the end of the Great War, after a German submarine sunk an American merchant vessel carrying goods across the Atlantic to Britain, gave America the excuse it needed to enter the fray. Because of the mobilisation of the armed forces, the virus quickly spread over the US Army camps in America and Europe, becoming an epidemic in the American Midwest, the East Coast and several French ports by April 1918. It didn't take long after that for it to make its way to the Western Front, cementing the Spanish flu spread to the rest of France, Great Britain, Italy and Spain. Soon after, the German Empire began releasing Russian prisoners of war who were possibly unknowingly infected with Spanish flu and ultimately brought it back to Russia. From there, it spread to North Africa, India and Japan and possibly had spread worldwide by this point, with cases confirmed in Southeast Asia, China and Australia as well. Much like we've seen with COVID-19, Spanish flu spread in waves with the first wave of the virus ending towards the second half of 1918 and was considered relatively mild compared to the successive waves with mortality rates linked to flu not increasing too much compared to previous years. With around 75,000 flu-related deaths reported in the first six months of 1918 in the United States compared to 63,000 deaths in the same period just three years earlier. Although there was no quarantines or lockdowns as we have come to know them, during that first half of 1918, the spread of the virus still led to massive disruptions in the military operations of World War I, with three quarters of the French troops and half of the British troops falling ill. The second wave of the pandemic began in August 1918, being helped by troop movements as the war came to an end, and each country's soldiers began travelling back home and was even helped further by mass gatherings to celebrate the armistice and the end of the Great War. The second wave was also much more deadly than the first. The first was more typical of flu epidemics with the sick and elderly being the most at risk, while younger and healthier people recovered quickly. However, this was not the case with the second wave with the virus now seeming to mainly affect the young and healthy. 
This saw the death toll shoot right up with the United States recording 292,000 influenza related deaths between September to December 1918 and even more worldwide. With the Spanish flu ripping through populations all over the world, affecting the young and healthy, it would be hard to see an end to the pandemic. But it did end. After another two waves spread around the world, by 1920 the Spanish flu was gone. But without a vaccine for the Spanish flu, what actually happened to it? Did it just stop spreading? The answer is humanity didn't develop herd immunity. The Spanish flu didn't stop spreading. In fact, it's probably still here today. Spanish flu most likely became one of the seasonal flu variants that circulate in populations today, with the Spanish flu rapidly mutating into a strain that was much less deadly. Bear in mind here, flu is still a deadly virus that kills anywhere from 300 to 600,000 every year, even with modern medical treatment and modern hygiene standards. But why did the virus mutate? Well, it's recognised that pathogenic viruses have a tendency to become less lethal over time, as their main goal is to infect hosts and spread. It's better for them to mutate into a form that can spread through the population without killing off the host, which is something we might hopefully be witnessing with the Omicron variant of the coronavirus. Viruses can, however, mutate the other way, with a descendant of the Spanish flu being found in a swine flu outbreak in the 1970s. The evidence for this is there. After the second deadly wave of the Spanish flu having such a high mortality rate, this dropped off significantly for the third and fourth wave before it mutated into a much less deadly strain. So to answer the question of what happened to the Spanish flu, it's still here, with its mutated descendant being part of the seasonal flu. It's only because of the massive leaps in modern medicine, developments of yearly flu jabs and public awareness that we managed to ward off the Spanish flu from mutating back into a more deadly strain. But why did we decide to call it the Spanish flu? We've already established that it didn't originate in Spain, with the first known and recorded case coming from the United States, and there being convincing evidence that it originated in East Asia and made its way over to America before being detected. The reason is because of World War I. Both the Allied powers and the Central powers didn't want to report deaths related to an outbreak of influenza as they believed this would be bad for morale. However, Spain, who wasn't part of the war, reported accurately and heavily on the spread of the 1918 influenza, while other countries censored reporting on it, giving the impression that the pandemic began in Spain, and the name has stuck ever since. And there you have it, your 7 minutes in history video looking at how the Spanish flu pandemic ended. If you enjoyed my video, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel where I'll be making more content like this. I really appreciate you watching and look forward to seeing you again next time.